it's better eyesight now.com and my name is Greg Marsh and what we want to do tonight uh, this is eyesight improvement it's eyesight relaxation and it's definitely Bates method everything I've thought and done and been interested in for geez like 35 years has has been centered around the Bates method it just uh, because of my own situation and because Bates is so compelling and because it's like a doorway into that whole health model not just eyesight but everything where emotions thoughts you know uh, I think most of you can see me but a lot of you called by phone um, so I'll describe what I'm doing if if I do something conspicuous but but now just touch your neck and just imagine that you can put some tension in your neck and imagine that tension is related to maybe fear maybe anxiety maybe uh, deep sadness and now imagine that you're just carrying that tightness around all the time well that can lead to real problems you know you don't have circulation and and uh, it can become a habit of strain and it could lead to real uh, back problems so same thing think about your belly think about your digestive system maybe even touch it just for for emphasis here I'm you know, then then my head will get cut off again um, and just imagine, and this is so similar, it's, and in fact, it overlaps so often with eyesight. Uh, some of you wrote in some of the things you were interested in, and, uh, and some of them had just mentioned that you had other things going on that, that are digestion related. But just, just uh, pretend that the muscles in your uh, digestive area, pretend that because of uh, some anguish or some fear or some anxiety that just won't let up. So tighten those muscles in your belly. And now just hold them for a moment, and I want to ask you to notice a couple things. One, are you breathing? Okay, nobody can speak because I've got you all muted, but I think a few people said, oh, no, I'm not breathing. Okay, now let your belly go again. Let it relax even more. And now notice when you tighten your belly again, what happens with your shoulders? Okay, tighten your belly again. And maybe it's shoulders, maybe it's neck. Maybe it's even your legs are getting tight, or maybe even your feet. So this is just, I want to start out with something that's not the eyes, because unfortunately, here you, some of you have seen my Halloween eyeballs. Unfortunately, um, when we think about the eyes, the eyes are about the most self-conscious organ that we could possibly try and talk to and work with. You know, like if we're doing physical therapy, if we've got an injured arm, it's out there, we can see it, we can work on it. Um, building strength is a really good idea. With eyesight, building strength is a really bad idea. See, so you think the eyes are lazy, you think they need to be like, you know, step up and, you know, build their muscles and get into shape. But it's exactly the opposite. The whole Bates method is founded around, uh, we see clearly when we're effortlessly, now you know there's muscles moving your eyes, right? Look how easy these are moving. I've, I've got these rubber Halloween eyeballs in case you're listening on the phone. And just look how easily they're moving. And that's how easily we really want our eyes to move. So we just think the thought of something over there and the eyes just go. Think the thought up there and they just go. Okay. But if, you're, if you want to try and fix, okay, so the Bates model, let's say myopia or nearsightedness, it's you know, I'm squeezing here. This balloon is a little easier to show it with. Is muscles are going to make the eyeball too long. So I'm just showing I'm squeezing a balloon around the middle in case you're on the phone. 
and the eyeball's getting too long. If you've seen me do this before, um, think of it fresh. Let it touch you. Feel viscerally what's happening here. There literally are muscles. And I promise, 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 uh, if, you're, if you have a strong prescription, if you have even a mild prescription, you have strain somewhere in your eyes. And we'll explore in a, in a second to show that you have it somewhere in your shoulders and your neck also. So if you have a strong prescription, you have a lot of strain. If you have a mild prescription, you still have strain 24-7, even when you sleep. So uh, there's different, you know, here might be farsightedness by the Bates model. There's also the, the lens of the eye is up in front here. And, and it has a whole set of muscles that constrain and, and, uh, and cause problems. And then uh, astigmatism, and even if you've seen me do this before, I, <laughs> this balloon is my favorite trick. Um, astigmatism is just when, well, what if all those muscles go all weird? Can you see how, you know, now things aren't symmetrical? And that's exactly like if the cornea is not symmetrical. So when the light comes in and the cornea tries to bend it, it's going <laughs> all these different ways. So. So the solution you can see is, this is the, the heart of the Bates method, is relaxation. And so now just, um, it's probably worth closing your eyes. And in fact, you'll notice if you have any of my programs or you've been to a workshop or uh, right now we're in the midst of a vision coach training. You'll notice I do a lot of, uh, okay, now close your eyes. Because... If you close your eyes now, it's a lot easier, and I've closed mine too, it's a lot easier to kind of feel your eyes and pay attention to your eyes and take advantage of the awareness of your eyes. Just try and notice if there's a little strain. And now pretend that you can tighten your eyes or tighten those muscles. Just pretend whatever way makes sense. And even though it seems like torture, this will be really helpful. So when you tighten your eyes, I don't know about you, but I notice my shoulders get tight, my neck gets tight, my belly gets tight, I stop breathing. So, so I, I had us do the neck first and then the belly, and now we're doing the eyes. Because the eyes are very shy. And so many people write me, or, or the first time we talk, like on a a uh, Skype session or something like that. So many people, they want to know, like, how can I force my eyes to see? Or <laughs> even more tricky is, how can I force my eyes to relax? And that doesn't really compute very well. So, uh, so the tools we use are relaxation, breathing, imagination, and of course, if you know the Bates method, you know that a lot of it's about movement. But see, if you do 20 minutes of the so-called Bates long swing, and that's now if you're on the phone, I'm, I'm doing the Bates long swing. And if you just go like a one and a two and a three, it, like you're doing push-ups, it, it won't help. It won't help at all. But what if you... Uh, can always enter this Bates practice through a doorway of wonder. And now what if you're moving a little bit, maybe go a little slower, sometimes that's helpful. So it's more like uh, the Wizard of Oz, the yellow brick road, the, um, not the flying monkeys, but the, the, the fun and safe stuff, you know? But all this sense of wonder and just feel things unfolding as you go each direction and feel this just wonderland that your eyes are moving through. Okay. And so you can already start to feel the difference. And uh, anybody who's worked with me a little bit knows I'm also very fond of EFT tapping. Um, the martial artist in me really likes things that are really simple, things that are easy things that are uncomplicated. And believe me, a, a lot of people will say this isn't true, but it is true. 
EFT can be absolutely as effective as EFT tapping, you know, like, even though I think I must be scared to see, I love and accept myself just as I am, you know, doing that three times. And then uh, I'm scared to see. Yeah, I wonder what I'm scared of. And you feel how it's starting to get a little bit intuitive uh, or how it could. And uh, there's something magical. And I won't go into all the theory of EFT. Uh, some people wax eloquent and make it complicated again. But that's just to say imagination, breathing, uh, movement with awareness. Uh, if you do Qigong, you can, you can take it from a Qigong doorway. Or if you're a Reiki person, you know, and you are interested in, in the energy of your hands, you know, you can, here's palming. In fact, here, let's, let's just do one little Bates technique before I start taking questions, and then it'll be more personal. Okay. So uh, palming is kind of the most famous Bates technique. Why does it work? Um, I don't know. I always tell people when they ask that it's magic. <laughs> um, and you can come up with a lot of theories. You know, the hands are minor chakra centers. Uh, Dr. Bates talked mainly about how, and see, just, just cover your eyes if you're on the phone. Uh, just cover your eyes. And here's another trick I use a lot. And that is, now you've got your palms over your eyes and your fingers are on your forehead and your, your hands are just making a really nice connection. Your eyes are gently closed. <laughs> and here's the technique that I like to add to things. Go ahead and actually make your fingers really tight, really tense. And this feels annoying, but it's a very loving and insightful thing to do for your eyes. Okay. And your fingers are tight. Okay. Well, the thing to know is some people palm this way for many years. And it, it, it really thwarts what you can get from palming. So now let the fingers start to relax. And you notice as the fingers relax and sort of melt into the forehead, you notice that, wow, my shoulders are relaxing. My chest is opening up. I'm breathing. And these are all good things. Okay. So now just blink your eyes open. And a good thing to do is, here, I'll hold up the side chart. I, I actually should have held it up beforehand too. And you know, or pick up a book or something that if it's, uh, if you're more interested in small print, but palming absolutely will work. And if you want, you can play with palming while I'm talking and experiment and just let yourself kind of fall into it. You know, don't think of it as so much, oh, okay, I'm putting in my time. I've got to do this palming. Um, but Think of just kind of falling into it and letting something very magical happen, surrounding your eyes with love, surrounding your eyes with energy. So, okay. So that's just a little bit of a, a Bates forward. And now what I was thinking is, you know, maybe the simplest thing to start with would be some... Uh, some a mild uh, nearsightedness. And what I was going to suggest is if somebody is interested in, in just kind of talking that through with me, we'll go through a couple of techniques and then everybody can follow. Uh, if you have kind of mild nearsightedness, you know, like minus one, minus two, minus three or so, <laughs> or a little more, uh, go ahead and raise your hand. And the way you do that is um, if you don't see any icons, just tap on the screen if it's a, an iPad or, or run the mouse around the middle and you'll see some other options. And you may directly see raise hand 
or you may um, you may have to click. Let's see. It's everyone's. All these platforms are a little different. Okay. So let me see here. Um, give me just a sec. This will we'll get really smart here in a minute. Okay. Um, okay. So nobody's raised their hand. So. Uh, Okay, where do you raise your hand? Up at the top, speaker. Oh, I know why I can't see it, because I'm the speaker. Um, so just kind of poke around. You might have to touch those three dots. And then uh, and then I, I promise you this will be fun. And uh, oh, there's a couple hands. I, I just had it turned wrong. Okay, so. Uh, how about Carol? And uh, I'll unmute you. Unmute you. Hi, Greg. Hi, Carol. Hi. I just I, actually I, I raised my I, hand to let you know that the way to tell people to raise their hand is on the bottom of the screen. It says participants, and if you click on participants, it will a screen will show up telling you to raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, yeah. And my nearsightedness is a little bit more than mild, but I'm totally up for doing the exercise if you're okay with that. But I did want to give you that warning. Well, I'll tell you what. How about if I leave you on mm -hmm. and I add another person too? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, let's see. This would be Lorraine. Got your hand up. Um, unmute. Hi. Oh, wait. Did I get the right person? I got Jim and Kim. I'm sorry. Uh, let me let me do uh, Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, yeah. hi. And where are you from? I'm from Plymouth, Michigan. I actually met you a couple of years ago. I came to one of your uh, workshops in Chicago. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay, I remember you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And now remind me, uh, Carol. Mm -hmm. Ar Arizona? Arizona, yes. Yeah, you yeah. Very okay. good. Okay. Scottsdale. Wow, so we got two veterans here. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and Lorraine, uh, remind me where you're at with eyesight. So. Um, well, uh, when I was in college, I started needing glasses for long distance, but, mm -hmm. um, eventually, I don't know what happened. One eye got completely better and one eye got mostly better. And the older I got, I just stopped wearing my glasses. So I was doing pretty well, I thought. And then, um, I'm now 56 years old and, you know, I'm having the can't read magazines, can't read vitamin bottles kind of problem. And I have been trying to do exercises, but so far I haven't, I was resisting using any kind of magnifying glasses. And I've noticed that I started avoiding doing certain things in my life because I didn't want to wear glasses. So finally this year I gave in and I started wearing those little cheap magnifiers and immediately my eyes got worse, like I knew they would, mm -hmm. <laughs> because, you, you know, that's one thing it's I learned. Like, it's like if you, start walking with a walker yeah then you need the walker like my mom would not walk with the walker mm -hmm. finally she actually started uh she was real inspired by this other lady who was doing laps at this huge place where she lived mm -hmm. uh, it was a an independent uh living place a huge racetrack around a central uh courtyard and and so my mom started doing that and and her walking totally came back to her. But mm -hmm. if she'd have gone, you know, committed to the walker, it would have been just like what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And well, so, so I'm kind but, of so it's a dance, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, actually, so this is perfect. So Carol, you've had kind of a mild nearsightedness, kind of got through it, and now you've got a mild or or becoming more significant uh, reading glasses. That's the right thing. That's Lorraine who had Oh, that. that's me. That's Lorraine. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I, I knew I knew that. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. I okay. I was thinking of Michigan. I was yeah. just I was just mixed just up. Okay. Okay. And then um, and then Carol Correct. has a little you have a little higher nearsightedness. Yes. I have a higher nearsightedness and I have nearsightedness in my right eye. Very little nearsightedness in my left eye, but my left eye has severe astigmatism. So it's a really interesting combination. Nearsightedness in my right eye, astigmatism in my left. Yeah. Interesting. That's, that is a good word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell you what, let's kind of meld these together. Okay. And, and um, I think what I want to do is, rather than go r run right to a Bates technique, Maybe we can all close our eyes, all three of us, and anybody else who wants to. Just close your eyes and imagine. Okay, close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Let your shoulders drop. Let yourself take a couple of deep breaths. And let your whole face start to relax. Maybe your jaw drops just a bit. And then take a couple more deep breaths. Good. And now, just kind of gently, usually I'll take a little more time to get people relaxed. Uh, you know, starting even with the feet. Which seems, seems ironic since we're talking about the eyes. But the eyes are very shy. And if the eyes think even for a second that we want them to perform and get better, believe me, they will try. And that is not a, <laughs> and that is not helpful. We don't want the eyes to try. Mm -hmm. So, so kind of feel, um, in Lorraine's case and Carol's case, both when you got nearsighted, it's like metaphorically Louise Hay. A lot of you might know that name. Louise Hay would say, uh, you weren't sure where things were going or yeah. it looked scary out there yeah. or um, fear of the future, you know, just any kind of metaphor for things that are kind of out there and this with no judgment. And also you may not even relate to it and that's fine too. But, but just as you kind of feel, go back and forth for a moment, kind of pretend and feel that everything feels safe and happy. The whole world is lined with all your friends. And every time you speak, they look at you and say, wow, it is so fun to hang out with you. Just everything feels really safe and fun and all that. And feel how your eyes feel with that. Just feel how they feel. They feel really relaxed and open and and like they can let all this stuff in. And now imagine that, you know, whatever came to mind when I was talking a moment ago, now imagine that you feel that constraint, you know, whether it's something you don't want to see or uh, where am I headed? What's, where is this going? Just do you feel, do you both feel a little bit of the difference in your eyes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now let it go again. Back to that warm, safe, happy, friendly world. Okay. And we're, we're going to cycle back and forth a couple more times. And both of you, uh, either of you, uh, just say, okay, now your eyes, you're letting them get tight again because they don't feel quite so safe. And you, do you notice some muscles that tightened a little bit? Just call out any one area that tightened. Um, the muscles around my eyes and also mm -hmm. the muscles um, at the occiput. Okay, at the back of the head, those little... The back of the head open. meets the neck. Okay. My and the shoulders. I felt like my cheeks kind of crunched up. Excellent. Excellent. Those are, those are perfect. Okay, now, now go ahead into those places you just named and tighten them even a little more. 
this would be the day when there's the big blur, right? Okay. Well, we really don't want to see something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, yeah. this this may feel kind of annoying to do this, both to yeah. you two and to anybody else. And yet, it's a very loving thing to do for your eyes. So, so if you don't mind, just kind of go with it a couple more times, because it'll give your eyes some great insights. So now, as you let it go, let it go, let it go. What? Muscle places do you notice relaxing? Or what body places do you notice relaxing? Just name a couple. My jaw relaxed. Mm -hmm. My shoulders went down. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So, so maybe this helps. I, I mean, in a way, of course, with you two, I'm preaching to the choir here. But, um, I mean, you're already believers in this. But, uh, for everybody listening, um, just not as an idea, not as a logical idea, but as a visceral experience now, okay, tighten again those spots and feel those muscles engage. And now let them go. And tighten them again. And let them go. And now let's go back just to the eyes and be attentive to the eyes. And now just imagine or pretend that you can strain the eyes with these muscles that are wrapped all around them. They're very strong muscles, you know, because maybe the eyes don't feel quite safe or confident about what they're seeing. Okay. And how's, well, I'm asking everybody, uh, and then let it go again. And then tighten the eyes. Uh, and then let it go. Yeah, and yawning and sighing are really good too. So tighten the eyes again and let them go. Tighten the eyes again and let them go. And see now when you palm again, and, and again, if you're on the phone, palming is where you put the palms over your eyes. Just notice how, just with this little extra bit of awareness, you can fall a little deeper into palming now. It's just a little more dear and deep and wonderful. And, and now you're supposed to say, you're absolutely right, Greg. <laughs> you're absolutely right, Greg. You're absolutely right, Greg. <laughs> no. Well, thank you. <laughs> but any any comments from each of you on that? Ab about did that kind of augment the palming or make it speak to you a little more? Um, this is Carol. For me, it actually was uh, pretty strong, and I feel like I'm on the edge of I could cry. Oh, yeah. So it's interesting. Well, I, I wish we had time to to go there, but yeah. but. Um, but yeah, the emotions, like when we let go of the eyes, they literally have been holding in emotions, right? right? That's, there's a, like there's an awareness of how tight and tired and strained they are. Yeah. And yeah. I don't usually have that awareness. And so. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. and, and Lorraine? With me, um, something you said a, a few minutes ago about safety started me thinking, what do I not feel safe to see? And you know, um, I'm a little bit of a technophobe. As a matter of fact, when I s logged on and saw that I had to download this Zoom installer, and then uh -oh. I, had to, uh -oh. <laughs> so I almost said, oh, forget it. You know, <laughs> too many steps. It was like three steps too many. <laughs> and, uh, I have a tendency like um, anything on my phone, you know, I have I don't I don't enjoy using all the newest apps, mm -hmm. and I don't enjoy listening to books from the library on my phone, and I don't enjoy shazamming music okay. and reading the lyrics, and I really think um, I might be using my eyes a little bit like an excuse, you know, like oh I can't see it, 
I've many times I tell people, I just can't see it. Like I can't see the menu. I'll just have what you're having. Or, <laughs> or, I, or I'll say to my son, uh-huh. what's the weather going to be? He says, he says, why don't you check your own phone? And I said, oh, just tell me, you know, <laughs> cause I don't, because I don't want to get those little readers out. And yeah. but so it's partly my eyes, but it could partly be, you know, that I actually don't want to see some of those things. I, I don't know. I'm just a little confused about that, but I'm wondering if, cool. if, so, if it's kind of a link. That's fantastic. So can you see both of you? Mm-hmm. And again, you know, you're already believers. You're already on the team. And yet, you know, you might be having little nuances of new insights, even in this short exchange that we're having. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, so see, here's the thing is everybody wants to like, kind of bludgeon their eyes with this, like, I'm going to baits them into seeing clearly. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just, and every ounce of insight and awareness is worth a pound or maybe quite a few pounds of Bates push-ups. And, mm-hmm. the, and the thing is, they're not Bates push-ups. They're, not they're, they're <laughs> meditation, they're yoga, they're, mm-hmm. uh, they're magic, they're Qigong. You know, they're not, and, and the, everybody makes that mistake, just about everybody, because that's the whole es- ethic of our culture. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like saying, uh, you know, when you can't remember something, and this, let's say this is your brain. I'm, I'm holding up the balloon again. This is your brain, and you're going, remember, darn it, remember. You know, <laughs> and it's like, it's not going to remember, right? Mm-hmm. It's, no. it's, it waits till later when you, like, set it down and walk away and don't worry about it, mm-hmm. that's when it lets go. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I, I might've told this story before at a webinar. I'm not sure. Or, or maybe one of you guys have heard me tell it, but, but I love this story. There's a, a vision teacher in Italy, Morizo, and then whatever his last name is. Um, and they had a, a several day workshop where everybody is improving their eyesight. That's, we came here to improve our eyesight. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then they had a person who was just bopping in and out, cooking and running errands, going into town, uh, doing all that stuff. And, um, and he was just there to make a few bucks. He wasn't there for the workshop. Well, guess who at the end of, this, of, of the <laughs> workshop made the most improvement? Okay, he did. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's my message in this webinar. It, and let's stay with it. We'll keep and and we'll keep uh you know talking to different people with different conditions. But even if they're not your conditions, can you see now how if we kind of all go there together with awareness mm-hmm. rather than trying trying to do it with willpower. Mm-hmm. And and the the great paradox is when we try to relax with willpower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it's right. like you can't get there from here, but boy, right. do we try. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so thank you so much, Lorraine and Carol. And Thank you. And, um, and I, I bet I'll run into the two of you again at, oh, for sure. at some point. Mm-hmm. So, okay, well, thanks so much. I'm going to go ahead and... Thanks, Greg. Yeah, oh, thanks. Thanks. That that is great. You guys are perfect. Okay, so Carol and Lorraine. I'm getting so smart. I can do this. Okay. And I'll lower the hand. Actually, maybe I'll leave the hand up. Just no, I can't do that now. Um because you shot way down the list. Um Okay. So uh how about uh let's see. Maybe a more, a lot of people wrote down things of, of things they were interested in, astigmatism, nearsightedness, double vision, headaches, inflammation, dry eyes, cataracts, questions about EFT. Um, another one was like, after all these years, can it work? Um, yes. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. And... Um, Glaucoma, floaters, legally blind. Oh, and this is the place where I need to say, uh, you know, none of what we do here is medical in any fashion. And absolutely, 
you know, everyone is responsible for seeing their eye doctor and, uh, and, and getting professional input on eyesight problems or, or uh, phenomenon that, that you're worried about. Um, and there, there are especially certain things, like if you have a cataract, so-called, and I, I actually like to call it cloudiness, uh, because cataract is such a strong word. But, um, you know, those are, can be watched. It's like not any surprise is going to happen. But if you suddenly have like a gray veil in the back of your eye, uh, you know, which could be a detachment or something like that, or uh, if you suddenly have a lot of new uh, floaters or flashes, you know, that could be a, a sign of something. And, and definitely, you know, when you have things uh, that, that trouble you, you should see your doctor. Okay, that's, that's my little pitch. Um, so uh, how about a few of you said double vision. Uh, anybody want to... Uh, Anybody want to uh, do double vision with me? Just kind of look at that and see what that might. It, it, we might look at techniques of some sort. Uh, <laughs> there might have only been a couple of people, and maybe they didn't come. Um, it just seemed like that might be a thread. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me see if. That would be you. Okay, unmute. Hello, would that be Shake? Yes. Hi. Did I say your name right? Yes. Okay. And uh, would double vision be of interest to you? Yes. Great. And, um, oh, let me just ask where you're from, because that's kind of fun. I'm from New Jersey. New Jersey. All right. You and Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, so if you're game, and I, and I don't want to, you know, push on you or anything, but um, would you want to say a little bit about uh, when you have double vision and when it first happened in your life, and uh, does it get worse sometimes? Uh, it started uh, last February. Oh, now could I just ask you? If there's any chance, are you on a laptop? Uh, yes. If there's any chance while you're talking, you could get just a little closer to the microphone. That'd be perfect. Okay. Is it better now? Oh, that's fantastic. That okay. is perfect. Yeah. Okay, so it started last February, and uh, um, it's just it's not uh, per like all the time. It's on and off. Mm -hmm. Any kind of stress, uh, being hungry, stress, you know, uh, hardness. Oh. But uh, there are times that it's perfectly normal, but there are times that it's just it's uncontrollable. I can't drive or anything. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, let me ask you: Do you did any? And and you don't have to say what or even whether. But if that started last February, that's about a year ago. In the time, the weeks or months leading up to that, was there just an uncommon amount of stress in your life or hardship of some sort? Um, maybe some stress. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, let me tell you a story. Um, there's a woman who uh, suddenly was uh, had double vision, and she actually went to the doctor, and this doctor had given her these prism glasses, and I I don't know if you're familiar with those. That's like if if your vision is double, then the prism forces it to re-aim so that so that it can fuse better, so that it can converge better. I use the word better. Um, so, uh, so she had this beautiful six hundred pair, six hundred dollar pair of glasses, and this was a few years ago. They might have been more today. And um, and so 
this woman uh, had just finished uh, an educational program in a medical related field. And, and so she was a little enamored with the medical model and she, she thought there had to be something medically wrong. So, um, and you know, when I meet somebody, I always am a little careful. I don't want to push Bates stuff on them, or I don't want to push the emotional model of health on them. Uh, you know, just if, just if they're drawn there, because everybody comes to their own right conclusions about how the world turns and, you know, and if we happen to meet, then, uh, than we do. So uh, this person was fairly local. So I actually um, just met with her briefly and, um, and basically she had the most incredible stressful job where she was driving an hour to get there. It was the most demeaning job ever. And her boss was just, absolutely mean to her and then she had to drive back and she worked long hours and she felt like her life was falling apart and now uh the glasses and mm -hmm. and she just was beside herself she just didn't know what to do and so this is where i chose my moment because i i could tell from her whole story and and it sounds like yours too that it was stress and and so because she was so enamored of the medical model, I had to keep saying like a mantra. I said, it's not a disease, it's stress. It's not a disease, it's stress. And, and do you kind of sense that, Shakay? I think yes, at this point, mm -hmm. the repetition is coming on and off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let me tell you this lady's happy ending. Okay. She, um, <coughs> she signed up. I was doing a, a class that I think was six weeks long. And uh, she signed up. And this was like ruining her life. She was afraid she wouldn't even be able to practice her profession. And so she came to the class and, you know, we did the swinging. We did the bait stuff. We did... Uh, a lot of imagination stuff, and maybe you know that. Mm -hmm. Now, let me double check again, Shake, am I saying that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, so if you close your eyes right now, I'll close mine too. We'll do another visualization. And f for other people that are listening, even if you don't have a uh, double vision, which you probably don't, you can feel how if you close your eyes and pretend that you can feel how there's a muscle on the top of the eye that goes back. And when that muscle, it goes back, it attaches behind the eye. And when that muscle contracts, it makes the eye look upwards. Now, Shake, can you kind of pretend to feel that muscle? It goes yeah. up, upwards. Okay, so when it contracts, it just geometrically it makes the eye roll upwards. And then there's another one on the bottom of the eye that when it contracts and shortens, it rolls the eye downward, right? Yeah. Okay, and now there's another one on the right side of the eye. It contracts and shortens and turns the eye to the right. Okay, feel that? Yeah. And I'm being redundant, but this is really good to kind of calibrate your your mind okay and now finally there's one there's a muscle on the the left and when that contracts and tightens it pulls the eye to the left okay so um now i i neglected to ask you does your double vision come do you think more from uh strain in your eyeball or does your eye actually turn a little bit and look a little bit at, at, in a slightly different direction? Uh, the left eye turns more. Okay, perfect. So, so now, and see other people that are listening, you can, you can still uh, follow this along and, and get a lot out of it. Because what we're doing right now, 
on the one hand, we're doing specifically uh, where there's double vision, but on the other hand, we're exploring awareness of the eyes. So, okay, so eyes still closed. So you said the left eye turns in a little bit? Yeah. Okay, so, so can you kind of intuit, check hey, which muscle is the tight one? Um, inner corner, inner left corner. Exactly, exactly. So there really is a muscle there. It's called a recti muscle. And pretend right now that you could contract that muscle from strain a little bit and make your eye go in. And, and I don't mean this to torture you or anything. It's actually, as I said before, it's kind of a loving thing to do for your eye. It kind of makes it feel aware and, and appreciated and, and uh, listened to. So your eye right now, it's going, thank you, thank you for looking at me. I really, I really appreciate this. And, and thank you for, for helping me clarify what's happening. So can you kind of sense, Shake, how that muscle, when, when you have stress, that muscle may get tight? Yes, it's quite painful. Yeah. Okay. So now let's go back again to palming. And, um, and again, for people who are on the phone, you can see me if, you, if you're at a computer or on your tablet or your smartphone. Um, but if you're on the cell phone, again, it's just putting your palms over your eyes in such a way that they, they block out all the light and they just feel increasingly beautifully connected with your face. And now... Your fingers are melting into your forehead. And so do you feel now, Shake, how this is like the perfect balm, the perfect uh, relaxer for, yeah. that, for that muscle? And now here's what you can do. You can add some really kind and loving thoughts to it. And you can, you can kind of talk to that muscle and you can say, you can say something like, thank you for working so hard. I really appreciate all the extra work you've been doing. And now let's all just relax together. The palms, the eyes, the muscle, and just kind of fall into this relaxation and realize that we have a new ally with this palming and that any time it starts to get a little double, that just a few minutes of palming can help it let go. Okay, and of course there's a lot of other techniques you can do, but, um, and you know, I do things sometimes too where I'll uh, get somebody very relaxed and then have a dialogue with their eyes and talk to each eye so they can, can, can kind of work things out. But really, simple is good. And um, this may be all you need. I, how does that feel? You feel quite relaxed. The pain goes away and uh, it's, very, it's very helpful. It's, my, my thing is this, this has been very temporary. Yeah. So, um, Okay, so well, thanks. You were you were the perfect person to for to give us an example of how to look at the muscles and visualize them and and give them love and help them let go and and I'm glad to hear the pain goes away. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Shake. So now I'll mute you. Okay. And let me think here, where shall we go with this? Um, now, there was only one person with Karata Kunis. Um, if you're here, <laughs> and if you, know, if, if you wanna uh, talk to me, I, I might have a couple of interesting ideas. Um, but I'm not... Uh, 
actually, I shouldn't have said that. I should have said there were 10 people so you wouldn't feel put on the spot. Um, but I'll, I'll just say a, a, just a word about Karata kon Konis, which is basically, uh, I've got the balloon again, is the, it's also called conical, conical cornea because the cornea actually gets kind of cone shaped like this. And it, it, and because of all the strain, it can actually uh, thin out the uh, cornea. And, and they treat it by like putting on hard contacts that keep it in place and protect it and all that. But, but see, a really powerful way to behold it, think of it, remember before I was saying, okay, well, this is nearsightedness where the muscles make the eye too long. And then this is farsightedness where the muscles make the eye too short. And then, <laughs> and then I twisted everything all around. And I said, oh, this is astigmatism. Well, some people have reversed conical cornea. And it, just think of it as a super astigmatism. And then you ask, well, if it can be helped, why didn't my eye doctor tell me that? And the thing is, the eye doctor is a thousand percent sincere and a thousand percent a good person. But the thing is, that doctor doesn't have access to people who have made the, the fairly significant interchanges, probably emotional ones, uh, that would help let go of that. You know, and if you thought of Louise Hay, uh, you know, it might be like a, a very pointed, uh, like, ah, I don't know where my life is pointed. It's freaking me out. I, you know, it's funny how our body parts almost make puns sometimes, or, or at least definitely metaphors. So let me check. Uh, there are several said uh, glaucoma. Uh, how are we doing on time? Let's see. I didn't give an ending time. Um, Sometimes I go an hour on these, and sometimes I go just a little bit longer. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Who just who has something interesting they'd like to, to ask that might be a good follow-on from there? It could be a technique question, or it could be a, uh, an eyesight question. Okay. How about, uh, oh, having some really cool names. Um, oh, I remember you. Sharina from Hawaii. Okay, here we go. Unmute. Hi, Sharina. Hi. Um, so, um, like I said, I'm relatively new and there are a couple of things. I did watch some of your, um, quite a few actually of your videos online, mm -hmm. uh, but there, there are two things that I'm not really clear about. And um, one of them is I hear people talking a lot about getting uh, lesser prescription glasses. Okay. I have just dug out of my uh, storage. Okay. Let's just talk about that one. Because uh, that's a, a really big question, and it's an awkward one for me because, you know, I can, I can give you, well, no, I shouldn't even say that. I can tell you folklore about uh, two things. One is that just like with blood pressure, there's a white coat syndrome. You know, when you go in and you sit in or you go into the doctor's office and you're getting a blood pressure reading, and it's like, wow, this is really high. And the nurse smiles and says, oh, that's probably just white coat syndrome. You're around all these people with white coats, you're nervous, and your blood pressure shoots up. And then, and then he or she uh, talks you down and goes, oh, isn't it a beautiful day? Where did you go on vacation? You know, helps you relax. And then your blood pressure goes down. Well, see, the thing is, most eye doctors don't, don't really think about this, but that absolutely for sure happens to a lot of people if they have any test anxiety whatsoever. They go to the eye doctor and the eye doctor says, well, which is better, one or two? 
which is better, three or four? And you're going, shut up. <laughs> and um, uh, so, so one thing about glasses is do a lot of palming before you go into the eye doctor. Get the lowest prescription that you can. Also kind of play with the eye doctor and explain these glasses are too intense. You know, you may not want to mention the words Bates method <laughs> because then they might, the open-mindedness might be gone. But, but there's ways you can coax them and you can say, these glasses, they're just too strong. I feel like I'm like in a vice. Or another way that you can ask is you can say, I want some glasses that are just right for my computer and no more. And then that way you have a pair of glasses that's fitted to you that you might be able to wear, you know, you can't wear them for driving because you must be legal and safe for driving, but you can wear them for all kinds of things. And then, um, and then uh, there are other typical guidelines too that I go into with people, but, but um, basically to get a lesser prescription, uh, you need to find a friendly optometrist and uh, you have to be a little selfish about that and just ask a lot of questions. But if you go to a behavioral optometrist or a developmental optometrist, they are a tiny thin slice of the pie of the optometry world. Like maybe 3% of them are trained that way and maybe 1% one per, one actually practice. And typically the way you'll find them is do a web search for in your town for vision therapy and they'll tend to work with kids mainly and they're more open-minded and um and that's probably all i have time to say right now except that as as your instincts properly say sharina um these glasses are too they, they feel too strong so so you want glasses that can let you relax because the thing is um, here, I'll, these are some pinhole glasses I'll use as a model. Um, the thing is, when you had this test in the eye doctor, one or two, two or three, you know, five or six, um, you know, you were under a lot of strain and you might have gotten overprescribed. Well, now every time you put those overprescribed glasses on, you know, you're your eyes have to strain to be able to see out of them. So it's a, it's a vicious circle. So, um, so yeah, thanks for that question. And I, I hope that reinforces a little bit. Um, I'll mention there, there are uh, companies that you can go to if you're, you're a little bit of a do it yourself or that this is just folklore. This is not, a, this is not a medical recommendation, nothing like that, but you can go to a, a website like Zenni Optical, Z E N N I Optical.com, and and uh, they're dirt cheap, and just just drop something a diopter and find out. But that's folklore. I didn't say that. And I'm gonna have to. Um, uh, uh, well, okay, okay. So how does that sound for the glasses anyway, Sharima? Um. Yeah. What I was wondering is. Um, could I just get some pinhole black? Because I really only, it's just. Oh, pinhole. yeah, pinholes. Just get pinhole I, for the computer and for reading. That's all I need them for. And I would like yeah. to not be using the existing strength while I'm doing this work. So my question is, could I just yeah. get pinhole glasses and use those instead? Yeah. Can you kind of see how yeah. these, the ones on the whatever side they're on, the ones on this side have smaller holes. Right. It's a little hard to tell. No, so, tell. so pinholes, uh, just a quick review of pinholes. And then uh, I wanted to get to uh, Ava in Australia. Um, but pinholes are really cool. I mean, you can talk about pinhole camera and the physics of it. But when you get into the eyes, there's a whole other dimension going on because of, of how the macula is very different than the rest of the retina. The macula is where the important work is done of seeing clearly. So uh, if you're on the phone, I'll give a, just a little more explanation. 
but if you kind of roll your finger down and let the folds of the skin make a tiny little pinhole and then now look at before you do this look at something that's a little blurry with your glasses off of course and um and now you know your blur range might be up close or it might be in the distance and now pull this uh, pinhole right up and almost smash it right against your your eye and so you're looking through this pinhole, and uh, and if you've never done this before, it's just astonishing. Let yourself be amazed, because this this will help you believe that your eyes can see, because they can. So so a lot of what you learn, either you know on your own, or you can get my CD programs. Uh, we have a workshop coming up here in Colorado in mid-April. Um, I have a, and if you really want to go for it, I have a, a vision coach training, uh, coming up in, uh, mid June and that's a few days in person and then continues online. We have a wonderful group right now. A couple of them might be listening in fact. Um, but, but as far as the pinholes, I digressed the pinholes, uh, do two things. One is they give you clarity without the strain of the glasses. The other thing is if you try them and if you like them, it's a good sign that they probably also can be uh, training wheels. That is, when you put them on, you just you have to do something different with the way you look. And in fact, at first it might be a little annoying. So, so they're like training wheels towards better vision habits. So thanks so much for bringing that up, Sharima. Sharina, <laughs> sorry. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, so so thanks a lot. I, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and I wish you a lovely evening in Hawaii. Yeah. Okay, thanks again. And... Um, let me see. Eva is still there. You must be on the phone. Let's see. Let me unmute you. Hi, Eva. Yes. Good. Day. Yeah. So you're on the phone, right? No, I can see you. But I lost connection about a quarter of an hour ago, but I got got it back now. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm all right. Cool. Just trying to learn my little control panel here, how it works. But um, yeah, so you and I talked before we started the webinar. I was just yeah. formally talking to people. And what you were saying was uh, that starting at age four, which, you know, when you get into a high prescription, you have to, in order to earn your stripes, you have to start really early. So you started at age four. And... Um, and now you have a very high myopia, very high nearsightedness, mm -hmm. and, and you've been diagnosed with some atrophy of the optic nerve. Mm -hmm. And now you're saying they're telling you that you have cataracts and that possibly a year down the road, you might want to have those changed. And, and you're just thinking, well, wait a minute, how much... How much, you want to be kind to your eyes, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, yes. now tell me, uh, have, you, have you done some Bates techniques and things like that, or, or is this? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes, I do the farming, I do the long swing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I did do some of your webinars about a year ago. Oh, good. And, yeah. So I, I am practicing, uh, yes, mostly in the morning. Okay. Okay. So do you realize that, and this, see, this is one of the hard things about the optometry world, ophthalmology world especially, is they don't have very much time and 
all doctors today have forgotten bedside manner. Do you use that term in Australia? Bedside manner. Yes, we do. For, yes. you know, for a doctor that just knows how to talk. Like when I was a kid, yes. we had the doctor that came with the black bag and walked yes. right up to our house. Yes. And it was a little town in Ohio. And, and uh, my sister remembers that he laughed like a saw. He laughed like, ooh, 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 like that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But he, but he spent his whole time just asking us how we were doing. Yes. Because he understood what real healing is. And, and ophthalmology offices are, there's, they're places of fear. And, and, yes. I, and I don't mean that as a slam on the doctors. I mean, they're just, they're basically going the direction that society has pushed them. You know, because we all want quick fixes and we all want to be told what to do. Uh, but, but one of the, one of the best, best things you can do, and I can tell you're doing it is, um, here, here, let's, since I keep saying, close your eyes, let's close our eyes again. Mm -hmm. And whatever everybody's eyesight condition is just kind of tune in with Ava a little bit and everybody send her a lot of love until you're pretty sure she can feel it and just realize that. You know, we started out earlier by saying, well, what if there were emotional things that, that made the eyes not want to see? And so the eyes, out of love for you, they're not trying to torture you, but out of love for anybody who, who has, you know, a tightness in their eyes, they're, they're helping make sure things are a little blurry because it feels more safe. But mm -hmm. then, oh my goodness, we go to the eye doctor and they put on glasses. And then I already explained why they might be too strong. And then the eyes, I still don't want to see. So they get even tighter to make it blurry again. But the doctor comes in and saves us and puts on stronger glasses. And, and then it starts to be what they call progressive myopia. Mm -hmm. and, and you might have heard that term. Yes. Um, yeah. So... Really, um, I, the coolest thing that I was going to say is now your eyes are maybe still closed and you're feeling that love. There are a lot of people here tonight mm -hmm. and you can feel that love and mm -hmm. it just feels really warm and sweet for your yeah. eye muscles. Mm -hmm. And see, the thing is, it's scary for them to let go. Mm -hmm. it's scary because they've, they feel like this is their mission. They're supposed to protect you. And so mm -hmm. now what they're doing, I don't know if eyes can have toes, but we'll say they're dipping their toes in the water. They're going, is it safe to let go? Mm -hmm. Is it safe to let go? And you're saying, and all these people that are sending you all this love tonight are saying, yes, let go just a little bit. You don't have to do it all at once. Mm -hmm. And so now what you can feel or even pretend to feel is that cocoon of tight muscles. In fact, you've gotten so used to them, you, at first you don't even realize they're there. Mm -hmm. But now you at least suspect they're there. And you're caressing them, you're saying sweet things to them, and they're starting to relax just a little bit. It's like that kitty that mm -hmm. won't come to you. But if you're real patient, and if you keep, getting more and more creative it'll open up to you and it'll come and maybe it'll sit in your lap mm -hmm. so so now the eyes are starting to let go a little more those muscles that are wrapped so tight around the outside and what's interesting I should forewarn you um, as these muscles have been tight for so long that as they start to loosen up you might actually even feel a little pain and it won't be awful or anything, but it'll just, it, you might go, Whoa, why am I feeling pain? But mm -hmm. you, see, you can see why they would, right? Cause they've been like, mm -hmm. imagine clenching your fist for mm -hmm. uh, 60 years. And now all of a sudden you're going to like open it up a little bit. So mm -hmm. this is beautiful. Your, your muscles are ready. Your eyes are ready and you can feel how they're, uh, they're letting go a little bit. Do you feel that? Mm, they're, yes. they're dipping their toe in the water. And so, 
a really good mental model to have. And now, do you want to do some palming too? Do you think that would be good? Yes. Yeah. In fact, maybe you already were. So now you're mm -hmm. palming, and this even amplifies the love and the healing energy that you're circulating in around and mm -hmm. all through your eyes. Mm -hmm. And see, you don't want to freak your eyes out. You want them. You want to just be really sweet and kind to them. Mm -hmm. and tell them how much you appreciate them and just just let those muscles melt a little bit mm -hmm. and see your dog is even chiming in your dog wants to help too yes. yeah and so and so a really good idea to have in your imagination or to pretend is that your eyeballs are starting to return to their natural round shape. Yes. And that's such a refreshing idea, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So, so then, see, the doctor acts like, you know, if, if you have, um, Op optic nerve atrophy, is that the word they used? Yes. Yeah. So, so all that means is everything's so stretched out mm -hmm. that it just needs to relax a bit. See, mm -hmm. here's, what, here's what I've seen. Even if you don't have to like in, improve your eyesight to like a minus two, if you even just start moving the right direction, uh -huh. you can move into a zone of healing rather than yes. straining very readily. You can start doing that tonight. And so the thing is, there's a balance thing. And did you say you can see me? Or or not now? I can see you. I oh, okay. See. So I'm yeah. doing like with my hands, like a balance scale, right? Yeah. Okay, so for some reason, whatever, it's kind of been kind of like this. Mm -hmm. And whenever this hand is, is heavier, it, it's not, it can't heal because there's too much, the blood's restricted, the nutrients can't get there. Mm -hmm. But now all you need is these ingredients, palming and love and mm -hmm. imagination. Do you, do you, can you kind of feel how imagination is really the centerpiece? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So as you even start to imagine these things happening, then they are happening. So imagination is is the engine that that yeah. drives all this, mm -hmm. and as soon as the balance scale gets this even this far, that's called healing. Would you agree? Yes, definitely. Right. So you want to get into the realm of healing, which sometimes you do, mm -hmm. but you want to you want to palm often, even if briefly, through the day, and you want to keep. And you want to keep pushing the button again, the, the renew button, right? Mm -hmm. Renew. Okay. Renew the imagination. Renew the love. Re renew the relaxation. Uh, renew the healing. And, yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and also, this is very powerful, is imagine going back to the eye doctor and the eye doctor feeling just totally blown away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can, can you imagine that? Yes. It's kind of yeah. fun. Kind of fun, right? Yes. It's like where did those beginning cataracts go? Ah, uh, okay. And the doctor's scratching their head, going, "Huh? How about that?" Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So, so see the the irony, and I'll wrap up with this. The irony uh -huh. is. That with with strong nearsightedness, okay. Also comes a personality yeah. trait, which is it's a really wonderful personality trait. It's I bet you'll relate to this. High high myopic people tend to be very loyal. They tend to be somebody you can really count on. They tend to have super high standards, right? Yeah. Okay. Did I get that right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
so the other thing though is often people who are very myopic they're very shy about bringing claiming victory oh really i didn't know that what mm -hmm. i mean is if somebody's strongly nearsighted Mm -hmm. More likely, like somebody who has perfect vision is more likely to say, yeah, I'm making a lot of progress. But somebody mm -hmm. who's really highly nearsighted might go, I'm not going to tell anybody about this yet. It's not really happening yet. Fair See? Enough. So yeah. if, if that's true for you, which it might be. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Dare, I dare you to get up tomorrow morning, look in the mirror and say, yeah. This is working. This is working. Mm -hmm. You keep doing that every day. It, the first day it's going to sound like a lie. Uh -huh. Keep okay. doing it every day. And yes. I promise you in about 10 days, it's going to start to feel true. And yes. you're going to go, wait a minute, that's a lie. How can that start to feel true? So that's where imagination comes in. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Okay. I do. I do. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's absolutely wonderful to talk to you. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, and likewise. And, thank and you. Thanks so much for sharing all that. I, I really appreciate it, and I bet it, it will inspire other people. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Eva. Thank you. Greg. Have a good day in Australia. Yes, have a good evening. Okay, thank you. Where are you? In, in, not Co California. in Colorado. Colorado. We're, we're yeah. in Fort Collins, Colorado. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Great. Well, thank you so much, Eva. Thanks. Okay. Good night or good morning. <laughs> okay. So um, I'll wrap this up now. And uh, so the purpose of this webinar is just to help you catch fire with, you know, maybe a new doorway uh, into the Bates techniques. You notice I didn't dwell on just how to do techniques because how to do them matters so much less than how you feel about what you're doing and the awareness that you have and the breathing and and all that so so i hope this has given you some clues and if you want uh to learn more from me or uh, uh you know you can uh, check out our our uh, cd program called reclaim your <laughs> uh, reclaim your eyesight naturally yeah and um, uh, you can find that on our website and also uh, if you happen to be near Colorado or you can you have the resources to fly here uh, in uh, four weekends from now uh, we're gonna have a, a workshop here and the workshops are really really dear and really really fun and uh, and for a lot of people, I think they're life changing because you can see we're getting in a really good space, and um, and so it's not only literal eyesight, but it's also the vision of what we see in our lives. So so a lot of times, I think for people, it's it's like the first chance they've had to really slow down in this way for for many years. So um, those are. The workshops are, are really nice. And uh, we'll be doing workshops in the fall, and I don't know for sure where. Uh, likely Chicago again, possibly New York. Uh, I'm not fully sure. Um, and then if you're like way, way interested and want to do the vision coach training, uh, like the last one we had was at Redondo Beach, LA, and we were right near the beach. And uh, it's a wonderful process of... Uh, um, hanging out together, uh, getting a lot of trust, uh, doing some EFT and who knows what comes. And, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a really dear time. And then now like the class, uh, we just had our seventh class, uh, on Tuesday, yesterday. And, um, so we continue having classes online and the cool thing we do is buddy coaching where people coach with each other and the, and each week it goes deeper and deeper and, and people have wonderful check-ins about eyesight 
and about other things because it's all tied together. So, uh, so let me know, and you can feel free to call me to uh, the phone numbers on the at the top of the website. It's um, I'll say it. It's nine seven zero two two four five seven five four. If you have any questions about those things, so. Uh, Thanks everybody that participated live and thanks for some of the others of you that held up your hands. I, I really appreciate it. And, um, and thanks for coming. And, uh, I, I will make a recording of this available too. So, uh, if you want to listen to it again, or maybe you're listening to the recording. So, um, that's it. That's it. Again, I'm bettereyesightnow.com, Greg Marsh. And um, uh, maybe I'll send you out one more email just about uh, stuff that's going on. And, and hopefully um, you're on our email list. So, okay. Let's see. My, my other half tells me, she tells me that uh, I always do long Ohio goodbyes. <laughs> so apparently I'm doing that again. Um, okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Good night. And meeting.